Our planet's biggest and meanest supervolcanoes are waking up. When they erupt, you'll surely notice it, even if you live thousands of miles away from the epicenter. Scientists are worried we might not have enough time to prepare and deal with the consequences of a super eruption. There's some volcanic activity close to the Italian city of Naples. And no, it has nothing to do with the famous Mount Vesuvius, but with another volcano. This one is harder to see, as it doesn't have a tall peak like Vesuvius. But don't let this bad guy trick you. It could be way more dangerous than its giant neighbor. It does have a huge crater that's about 8 miles wide. This volcano is called Capi Flegre, and it's actually one of the largest volcanoes in Europe, sitting under the town of Pozzuoli. So, Capi Flegre erupted 39,000 years ago with a bang so massive it spread ash across the whole Mediterranean region. It also caused the temperature to drop by over 16 degrees Fahrenheit across Eastern Europe. It was the biggest volcanic eruption in Europe in 200,000 years. Since then, Capi Flegre has had smaller eruptions, and the last one happened in 1538. Now the area is full of small craters, hot springs, and bubbling pools, and they're all proof that this volcano is still very much alive and brewing something. Since the early 2000s, the ground in the giant crater and the town nearby have been slowly rising by about 1 to 1 and a half inches every year. There were at least 150 earthquakes that shook this supervolcano lately. In May 2024, there was a 4.4 magnitude in the area, the biggest in the last 40 years. Residents had to leave their homes and camp outside, fearing there would be more earthquakes. No one knows how Campi Flegre is going to behave in the following months or years. But the authorities are organizing evacuation exercises to prepare the population just in case. The Italian volcano looks like an innocent kitten compared to the real giants like Yellowstone. For a volcano to deserve the title of a super one, it must be able to produce catastrophic scale eruptions and eject huge amounts of magma, ash, and volcanic gases. The Yellowstone giant meets these criteria. Even though it moves from time to time, the Yellowstone supervolcano hasn't erupted for 640,000 years. But when it does wake up, it might erupt with incredible power, about the same amount as 10 huge nuclear power stations can produce. Under the ground beneath Yellowstone, there's a super hot area full of molten rock called magma. As more magma moves into a big space called a magma chamber, the ground above starts to swell or rise. When the magma cools down, the ground falls. Between 2004 and 2009, the ground at Yellowstone rose by almost 10 inches, but then it started to slowly go back down in 2010. Scientists aren't sure if it's going to erupt anytime soon. There's also another big volcano called Long Valley in California that has been active since 1980, and it can be a really big threat. Scientists studying this supervolcano found out that before its biggest eruption, 760,000 years ago, the buildup may have taken less than a year. Now, that's bad news, because a supervolcano eruption can have a huge effect on the world, like the eruption of the Toba volcano in Sumatra around 74,000 years ago. It became the biggest volcanic eruption the Earth had seen in 28 million years. It covered parts of Indonesia, India, and the Indian Ocean with a thick layer of volcanic debris, almost like a 6-inch blanket. The amount of rock it spewed out was like stacking nearly 3 million Empire State Buildings. The giant crater it left behind can still be seen from space. All the ash and gases shot up into the air and blocked some of the sunlight. It caused a volcanic winter that lasted about 6 to 10 years. Some scientists think this eruption might have even affected early humans. Around the time Toba erupted, the human population took a sharp dip, and there were far fewer people. Some say this is why all modern humans come from a small group of survivors. According to the Toba catastrophe theory, most early humans in Europe and Asia didn't survive the cold and harsh climate after the eruption. But a lucky group lived through all that in Africa. Not all scientists agree with this idea, and some archaeological and climate records show a different story. Another volcano that changed the world in a big way was Mount Tambora in 1815. The next year went down in history as the year without a summer. It was cold and rainy, and there was snow and frost even in the middle of summer, especially in Europe and North America. 
This happened because the volcano sent out a lot of sulfur dioxide into the sky, which spread all over the world and made the planet colder. When Tambora erupted, it caused huge tsunamis that smashed homes and took the lives of around 10,000 people. Afterward, about 80,000 more people passed away because of the consequences the eruption had caused in the world. The cold weather ruined crops, so food became really expensive. And because horses were the main way people traveled, the cost of oats that they ate went way up too. Some people even think this led to the invention of the bicycle in 1817, as a new way to get around. The eruption made the Earth colder for about three years. Now, even though the Tambora eruption was so powerful, Krakatoa, another volcano in Indonesia, stole the show when it erupted in 1883. It was just easier to spread information about it through telegrams and photos. Its final blast was the loudest recorded sound in history, and people could hear it on 10% of the entire Earth's surface. The eruption started a tsunami, with waves about half as tall as the Statue of Liberty. Now, if we only had 12 months to prepare for a supervolcano eruption, it would be really hard to store enough food and get ready. But don't panic just yet. Supervolcano eruptions are very rare, and the last one happened 26,500 years ago in New Zealand. Scientists think that a super eruption happens once every 100,000 years on average. But the sad part here is that the Earth doesn't follow a perfect timeline. There could be clusters of super eruptions with shorter gaps between them and then longer quiet periods. Since there have already been two super eruptions in the last 100,000 years, there's always a chance one could happen again sooner than we expect. Plus, although there are places like Yellowstone and Long Valley where we expect volcanoes to erupt, there are less obvious possible hotspots. In Chile, there's a volcano called Laguna del Maule that has erupted in the past and left behind a huge crater. Over the last 20 years, the ground there has been swelling really fast, rising up to almost one foot a year. Some people are worried that this could be a sign of a big eruption coming. But scientists say there's not enough magma yet to cause a super eruption. In Bolivia, the Juturangu volcano is also acting up. It's part of a group of volcanoes that have caused super eruptions in the past. Since the 1960s, the ground around Juturangu has been lifting. But the last eruption was 250,000 years ago. Even though the magma might be rising, it's not enough to worry about just yet. The chances of a super eruption happening during our lifetime are 1 in 1,400, which is pretty low, so you don't need to worry too much. But just like someone wins the lottery every week with very small chances, a super eruption could happen sometime in the future. And when it does, we'll need to be prepared. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.